Welcome to Wire Guild. This tutorial is for a chaos style Celtic cross with a gemstone put in it as well. So you're getting sort of three different methods in one tutorial and here's a, a picture of one of them. We're going to be using one millimeter or 18 gauge round wire. Uh, 0 0.8 mil or 20 gauge round wire and then we're going to use a bit thicker wire for this one we're going to use 0 0.5 or 24 gauge now if you want to use 0 0.4 uh, the 26 gauge that we usually use that's perfectly all right I just like a little bit more weight for this one it, it gives it a bit more oomph um, I used a 12 by 8 oval gemstone you don't need to use a gemstone at all um, really anything that's going to fit in your framework if you have something different doesn't have to be a faceted stone it could be a, a cabochon or even a bead so we're starting off with the wire and I really want to sort of work out how much you're going to use so this is uh, one of the prototypes that I made and you can see it's got the gemstone in it's got actually it's got a bit filthy hang on a minute if I just get a cloth I'll show you the difference one of the great things about copper especially copper that's been oxidized is this beautiful warm rich color however it darkens down very very quickly and a bit of a rub look how filthy that is you see it's really really coming up nice is that now a bit of a rub with a silver cloth will keep it nice and bright you can use renaissance wax or other coatings to keep it at an exact state but to tell you the truth I just suggest that people rub them up with a, a silver cloth and give them a good rub before they wear them and it'll bring them up in in no time at all you see that looks so much better get the cloth out of the way so this is what we're going to be making we've got our cross shape and we've got our sort of little circle around the edge which turns it into the the familiar style of the the Celtic cross that sits at the back we have the bale that goes over and then we have our cross piece all made out of one piece of wire well the frames made out of one piece of wire anyway so first of all I'm going to work out how much we need to make this circle so I'm going to use uh, the end of a, um, a ring mandrel to make my circle it's about the right right size it measures let's have a look just under an inch, near enough an inch across. So, oh, I haven't got thingies on that side. That'd be about two and a half centimeters across. Now, if you're very, very good at maths, you could work this out with pi, but to be quite honest, I get a piece of spare wire, wrap it round, and put a bend in with my fingernail where the two ends meet. And then I can straighten that out and measure it. It's a lot easier than doing, you know, pi times radius squared wow I remembered um, that's just over three inch so about three and a half three and a quarter something like that is how much or oh, eight and a bit centimeters so that's how much wire I need to make my circle at the top now you can write all these down if you want um, but you're going to need the length of your circle the length of your bales doubled and just remember you've got each side the length of the cross itself the horizontal pieces are downs they're on and down every section you can work out sort of how big that is and how much you're going to need so you can write all those down so we know what we're doing now you could um let's just have a look i'm going to use about 20 inch here probably about 18 inch when I get it all added up but I like to give myself a little bit extra and I've just marked the middle point of my wire so I'm on the 10 inch point and I've put a mark with a felt tip pen and I'm going to take my mandrel pop it over the top and wrap it around and wrap it around the other way giving me a nice circle now then once I've got that so it's pushed on and it's staying still flat nose pliers wrap over and then bend one of the wires 
straight upward. Don't bend them both because you won't get them in the same place. So I take my pliers out and then I go to the point where the other one's bent, where they would have touched, and I bend that wire up. There we go. Straighten that up a little bit. And we have a circle. I'm not quite in the middle. I'm a little off to one side, but honestly, I gave myself an extra couple of inches so it doesn't matter. This is my 0.5mm or 24 gauge wire. Like I say, it's a little thicker. If you don't want to use this, you can use a lighter gauge. I haven't bothered to straighten these two wires that are coming down from my circle. I've left them in a nice sort of flare out and get the wire where I need it to be. And then I'm going to wrap around one, two, probably three times. I could manage with two, but I'm going to go around three just to make sure that it's absolutely secure. This is thicker wire, so you're going to be sort of placing it rather than pulling it. So quite tight at the top. I'm going to go around there and I'm going to go around twice. Around and around, then back down through the middle. Sorry, it's awkward to do this underneath. And then tuck it in, leave it a little flat with my pliers because it's trying to twist. Squeeze it up and then bring it around the bottom wire. And I'm going to go around twice. There's one and two. Push it in so it's back down in the middle up over so it's a figure of eight each time so you're doing a figure of eight around two and you can see how slowly i'm doing this this isn't particularly i'm doing this very slowly because i want you to see what i'm doing i mean obviously i do want you to see what i'm doing but a very neat bale will really set the tone for the rest of your your pendant. Now I've speeded the filming up really because it just gets a little bit boring watching me doing the same thing over and over again. I'm following this slight flare out of the wire and all I'm doing is I'm wrapping around twice and then going like a figure of eight so down through the middle and up and around the other wire and I'm going to keep doing that same wrap and I'm following this lovely increasing sort of triangle shape that the wire was naturally sitting in. If yours isn't, when you put your circle in, just make sure that you get that nice sort of flare. Not too abrupt, not too sharp. We don't want this too wide, but a nice, it will give you a nice shaping. So let me see how much I've got. Now, these are my little markers that tell me how long everything is going to be. Now, that's, I want this to be about an inch and a half in total. So I'm going to get to the halfway point, which will be about three quarters of an inch, which I'm not quite yet there yet. So I'm just going to speed this up again. Once I get to about three quarters of an inch, let me just check the length again. That's more like it. Yeah, there we go. Then I can start and take my wires and bring them back together. I want like a almost like a diamond type shape. Yeah, and that was going to need to be about three quarters of an inch as well. Then put your pliers over the top where the wires cross and just give them. So sorry, I know I get in the way of the camera here when I do that. Um, I'm just giving them a little squeeze together. Can you see how they've put like a little bend in? There we go. The reason I do that is so that my wire still can go between them easily. Now I'm going to carry on the same weave, except now I'm on um, a downward slope, if you like. It's actually the wires are coming in. So you have to make sure that you push the wires back all the time because otherwise they'll slip and you'll get loose bits and what we're aiming for is a very very neat firm bale hence the reason that I've used this this slightly thicker wire but it is slightly more difficult is the thicker wire so if you want to use a finer one 
absolutely fine. No problems there with that at all. See how I'm constantly, even in, you know, with it speeded up, you can see that I'm constantly pushing these wires back up and even using the pliers. As you come down, you will find that you get into that po point where your wires are virtually together. I open them out at that point. If you want your wires to come all the way down to a point, you know, so that when you do your bail, you've got little, very, very narrow bit at the bottom, leave them. Personally, I like mine to splay a little bit more, especially on this shape of doing the cross because it adds a little to the top. So I'm just bringing my wires slightly out, but continuing to do exactly the same wrap. And you can see I've got like a soft curve there and I'm continuing over the curve. So almost my wires are starting to come out again as if they've flared in like a little waist. It's gone in at the waist and now it's coming out, but it's still the same figure of eight around twice, through the middle, around, around, and then back through the middle and around. It's a lovely weave. It looks really, really neat, but you do need that extra bit. Now I'm wrapping around just an extra time or two, and then I'm going to trim that end off. I'm going to leave a piece there. I'm not going to trim it off short. So I have a circle. I have a nice graduated point getting wider, coming back in and going out again. And that will create my bail. Now let's think about the, the cross itself. We need this wire to come out, down, in, down, and then finish. So you need that cross shape. Now the best way to do this is um, either mark it off on a ruler, like the way I'm going to do now, or you could, if you have a jig, you could actually create the cross shape on a jig, put the wire over it, and then wrap it around the jig, do it that way. But I'm gonna measure these up. Now, if I look at the other one, the length of the actual arm, if you like, is about three quarters of an inch. I'm just going to bend these wires out a little straighter. I'm using round nose pliers. I'm not using a square one. I just want a soft bend, but I want these wires to come out so that they there we go, nice and horizontal. So I'm going to measure this one at about three quarters of an inch. There we go. And mark it with my felt tip pen. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. So from the bottom of the little curve, I'm going to measure three quarters of an inch and I'm going to put a little mark on there. So that's my two sides marked. Now I need to come down. The down length needs to be about half an inch. Now this is for a large cross. So if you want yours to be smaller, you make adjustments at this point and make yours smaller. So I'm going to make the other side now half an inch. So I've got my going out and now they're coming down. So obviously they have to come back in. And the back in is going to be another three quarters, three quarters of an inch. It would help if I could speak so that it matches the top side. So you've got on, down, back in. So I've got three quarters of an inch, half an inch, three quarters of an inch. And these marks are going to set me up for creating the shape. Like I say, if you have a jig, use a jig. I would have shown you, but I can't find mine. I don't know what I've done with it. It's because I never use it, you see. So let me just show you on this. We have our, our bales. And the bales come down and with a curved end, go on to our cross. And then it goes back in. And in. It's not right straight. Whoops. And down. Now, what you could do is if you don't like the idea of measuring it and getting it spot on and you don't have a jig, you can do it this way. What you can do is you can draw your cross, correcting things as you need to on the actual drawing. Once you've got that drawn, you can follow the drawing like a template. 
So there's my circle, which will be at the back. And you can use that then. You can put your wires sort of over the top and say, yeah, this is how it's going to go. This is going to go here. I can bend it there. And you can use the drawing. Obviously, mine's going to be bigger than the drawing because of where I put the marks. But you could do it this way if you feel more comfortable. It's another way around doing it. You just grab hold and twist where the drawing was. I'm going to use my marks. So I'm going to put my pliers on right at the side of the mark. I want that mark to be where I bend the wire. Not in, sorry, my hand's in the way of the camera again. I'm just bending right at the side of that mark. I'll show you in a second so that you can see. There we go. It's not quite on the corner, but it's near enough. Let's do the other side. So I've gripped right at the side of the way, because the point you can see better there. And then I've bent down so that that black mark is right in the corner of where I'm going to be. Now I'm going to do it again and I'm going to come back inwards. The wonderful thing about this pendant and the reason why I've designed it like this is we're going to use the chaos curls over the top of our frame. I'm bending that in so it runs whoops, parallel with the other one. And then I'm going to do the other side so it goes the other way. Because of the chaos curls, if these aren't exact, there we go, that nice little weird square shape. If these aren't exact, the curls will distract the eye so that you don't notice. That's why we put curls over the top. So I need this now to come down, but I don't want a sharp edge like we've got on the ends. I want a rounded edge. So I'm going to put my round nose pliers right on that mark. Go on, in you go. On the widest bit, can you see I've got the mark there in the middle? And grip that and then bend my wire. If I could sort out which wire I was meant to be bending. Downwards. Oops, it's not quite on the mark. I haven't done it right. Let's get the other wire out of the way. What I've done, you see, the first time is I didn't move the pliers at all. I held the pliers static. And that's why they, that one's gone right and that one's wrong. So all I do is a grip again and then I just twist the whole thing. Don't worry about where the end's going because you can pull that back down like that. Now then, let's start wriggling this. So I'm straightening these wires out so that I can get my cross shape and I'll do quite a bit of wriggling. I want the, this to be almost a triangle. Not, that's a bit exaggerated, but I'll show you why in a minute. So I want those to go in. Now I can just pull down a bit. There we go. Not kinking that one. There. Quite like that. Then you see... I don't put it over now, it's still it's an awful lot bigger, but you can line it up and sort of say, look, there we go. So it's bigger than that one as well, but it don't matter. If you do do them big and you're doing them for sale, I've found right, I'm gonna do the length. Hang on, I want it two inches. Yeah, I want quite a big one this time, two inches. I think the other one was like an inch and a half. But let me just get my pen. And we're going to measure that at two inch points. Sorry, I pulled it really forward. All I'm doing is putting a spot on. I'll do it properly on the other side so you can see. There you go, just a little spot so that I know what I'm doing. If you are going to make one of these large and you are making it to sell, do put it on a much longer chain. If it's very big like this, I do find that most people want to wear them much lower, lower than the bust line, sort of almost, you know, onto the top of the tummy. Right, so pliers against that dot again, and I'm going to bend it in. And this is going to create the bottom sort of horizontal bar that goes across. And the same with the other side. Now you can play about here and make this as narrow or as wide as you want. I'm just going to twiddle those to get them evenish. And we're going to finish off the bottom quite easily. Once I've decided how wide I want it, 
I'm going to snip. There we go. Let's add that a little narrower. Just on these ends here. Can you see? I'm probably about, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch away from the end. And I'm just going to snip off there. Turn it over. And do the same on the other side. The reason for this is I'm going to just take my round nose pliers and I'm going to grip right on the very, very tip of the wire with the narrowest point of my round nose pliers and create a little tiny loop. Just go around till it touches. And then I'm going to do the same with the other wire. So bring that up, over, round, until it touches. Now we don't have any sharp ends now on the end of our cross and what we can do is just give that a bit of a wriggle. One will go to the back, one will go to the front and the curl sits into the corner of that bottom piece there. So I'm just taking a little bit more of the 0.5 wire that we used earlier to do the weaving. Now I'm not really going to do any weaving as such. I'm just going to use this to bind around. So I'm going to go in between. There we are. And then hold that down. And then I'm just going to go over. Make sure those are straight and over. Left myself a little tail at the beginning. Um, a, it's easier to hold because you've got something to put your fingers against and the wire doesn't slip round and round. But we're also going to need to do a little bit of just making sure it all stays straight and firm. And we're going to use that tail end to do that. So I'm going through the middle of our cross. I'm wrapping around that bottom wire. And I'm just going to keep going round and round and round until I've overwrapped. If you wanted, you could use a, a piece of square thicker wire. Sorry, square thicker wire. <laughs> a piece of thicker wire, not necessarily square. You could use any bit of scrap. Um, but I like to use the finer one because what I'm going to do is once I've got it where it's covered all the way along, I can go through the center of that little loop that I've made push it up a bit more. Now, if I make that nice and neat, just in line with the other side, I can then put my fine wire through the loop, pull that tight, and then I can wrap that around the sides. That will stop the because you've only wrapped around and around and around, there is the possibility that those two wires could slide backwards and forwards. By going through the loop and then wrapping up the side, you've stopped that happening. You've anchored it so that it can't really move. This does not need to be super duper neat. You don't need to worry about that because it's going to be covered with all of our chaos curls. But it's nice to have a nice strong foundation to work upon so that you haven't got any movement when you're putting the curls over the top. I'll get that side on. So I did the same thing. I went through the loop and wrapped around the side wire and then just smoothed that down in a circular moment, movement to press it onto the, uh, the thicker wires. Right, so we have our cross shape. There we go. Doesn't quite look like the one that we finished yet, and it doesn't look like the drawing, but uh, it will do very soon. Now then, gemstones. I've got some mystic topaz. These always look very nice in the crosses. They're a little bit subtle. Um, they're not too overpowering. They go well, but you could put something like a briolette. You could have it in higher or lower. You could put stones in each piece if you wanted but I'm going to pop this one in. I'll show you how to do both. The briolette's the easier of the one so I'm going to show you how to do the oval one and this would work with any shaped gemstone. I've got a little bit of 0.8 wire and I'm going to make a well an oval shape because I'm using oval. Obviously if I had a square stone I'd be making a square shape 
just so that my stone will sit on it. This is like a little framework, if you like, for my stone to sit on its little seat. So there's my oval. I'm going to check that my stone sits on there and can't fall through. Now I'm going to take one of the wires around a bit further. So I've got really sort of one wire on one side of the oval and one on the other. And I'm just going to grip both wires in my pliers and then I'm going to pass that through the middle so it has like a a twist in it. There we go, pop that one through, grab hold, pull. When it's let go of the second wire, of course it has. Give it another grip. Right, pull that through. Right, so I'm just neatening that up with the pliers. I've gone from one side of the wire through the middle and out, and I'm going to do the same with the other wire. So I'm going through the middle, bring that tight and take it out. It's just created a twist. It just gives it a little bit more strength. Make sure that your stone still fits, which it does, and then decide where you want to put it. I quite like them to be off center. Right. If I was using a briolette, let me just show you this right quickly because this would be just dead easy. Briolettes have a hole in the top. Or if you're using a bead, any bead would do. Just pop your finer wire or the wire that you put in the bead on, pop it through the bead and then just anchor it somewhere on the frame. So if I was putting that there, I would wrap my two, maybe a little higher, I would wrap my two wires around the frame at that point and then do the chaos curls around the briolette. Easy. Okay. This is a bit more difficult. Um, I tend to like to put these in offset. Let's have one wire underneath yeah, and the other wire over the top. I tend to put them in at an angle or offset, mainly because I have a pig of a job getting anything in straight. And if you try and put something in straight, I'm just wrapping that around the frame now. If you try and put something in straight and it doesn't go quite straight, it's very, very noticeable. If you try and put something in at an angle, it doesn't matter what angle it is, people assume it's the correct angle. So it's just a it's just a little cheaty way of making sure that you don't have to be perfectly straight. And after all, the design that's going over it is very chaotic, so it doesn't really matter. So there's you see it's straightened itself up. It's not quite straight, but there we go. It's a little bit off. Good. Take the tails of your 0 0.8 wire that you made your frame with and you've wrapped them around your cross. I am then taking one across the bottom of my stone. Can you see? It's holding it in. And then I'm going to bring, come here pliers, that up through there. And wrap that around the edge of the cross. Okay. Now I've turned the whole thing around and holding it in place with my thumb. I'm going to bring the other wire around the top of the stone. Now I did that in a slight arc. So there's just a little bit more over the stone. But it doesn't matter. As long as you are holding that stone in top and bottom. You've got the wires underneath it that ensure it can't drop through. And then you've just got these two wires over the top to make sure it doesn't fall off forwards. It's not particularly pretty and it's not particularly um, sturdy. It could be quite easy for the stone at that point to fall out. Just snip these edges off and smooth them down. However, as we put the curls over the top of the framework, we will wrap them over and around the stone. Not completely over because of course we want to see it, but around the stone so that we know that it's not going to move anywhere and it's absolutely stable. So there, just press that in. You can see the back, got plenty of light on the back as well. 
with the mystic topaz. Oop! <laughs> Said it went too stable. Now let me just pop that back in. In you go. Just pull that wire up a little bit more. Go on, get in. There. With the mystic topaz, it's quite a dark stone anyway, so it doesn't need too much here. Now let's look at these bales. You could use a pair of normal round nose pliers to bend them over. I've got some bale oval bale pliers, so I'm going to use those because they're parallel. That's the only reason. And I'm going to put that across the widest point, and then I'm going to bend that back. Now, as you can see, sorry, let me just get this little wire out of the way. There we go. Let's bring it back to you. Right then. As you can see, that circle is in the wrong place. So I am just going to wriggle this bale so that it moves the circle a little higher. And I'm just wriggling that. Let's have a look. It's still a little bit low. However, that bale isn't tucked quite in as far as it could go. So if I put my pliers on it and push it in, the depth that it goes in will raise that, there we go, raise the circle slightly. So give that a wriggle to get it central. Lovely. Now, do you remember these loose ends of uh, finer wire we used? We're now going to start and wrap those around the frame and the circle together. So they will add texture to the circle so that it's not just a plain, boring um, circle. And also anchor it to the frame of the cross itself. Can you see how I've gone over the two wires there? So let's go back in. I try and make this look quite um, messy and uh, organic looking. So it looks like uh, something has grown over this circle in years. Or if you want to be particularly uh, symbolic, uh, it looks a little bit like the crown of thorns. So we're going to pull that through. But it's doing a job as well. It's actually holding our circle that was at the top of our bales now onto the cross itself. Let's bring that round. Now I've just speeded it up because I'm going to do that for quite a bit. I'll do that until that wire has been used. And then I'm just smoothing that down. Just slowed it down so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just smoothing that wire on to the frame so there's no sharp bits. I'm going to take the other wire that we had remaining and I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to probably go the other way around the circle and wrap it round and around and under and over the cross. It's a shorter piece is this, but it will do the same thing. Then I'm going to take another length of the 0.5 wire and add it to it as well, because I still don't have quite as much texture or maybe if I'd have left um, longer lengths when I started, but they do get in the way when you're weaving. So. I'm cutting myself another length off and I'm going to go around again. Like I said, don't be too neat with this. I'm just in and in out in, under and over, around the circle itself. And each time you get to the bits of the cross that actually pass the circle, I'm attaching the two together. Once you feel you've got enough texture on that circle, you can trim off your ends and smooth them down. If you wanted a little bit more detail at this, you could take some tiny seed beads or some pearls or something like that, you know, these tiny, teeny, tiny ones, and actually add them in to the circle if you want. That looks very attractive, uh, particularly with pearls it does. It looks very nice. It, they sort of nestle in and amongst the copper and they do look lovely. So I'm just trimming that end off and smoothing down. I'll wrap that round a few more times. Everything that you're doing, as well as it being aesthetically pleasing and it looking pretty, it's adding to the strength of the piece that we're making. 
So our circle is now at the back of our cross and it's been bound. Now, this is 0 0.8 or 18 gauge round wire. I have two lengths. They're approximately, I don't know, probably about 15 or 16 inches long. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to start, I've passed through at a strong point, sort of between the edge of the cross and the circle. And I've made a curl. Then I'm going to go through the edge of the cross. Now it's just slipping off, but that's how I'm just going to pop it back into place. Wrap it around the edge, bring it back up. And create another curl. The curls I make between my fingers. I take the wire to another point and wrap around the frame. So I'm going over the top and in. And I'm going to keep going. I make the same movement all the time. You'll see the reason when you start making your own why I only use shortish lengths of wire and not huge, you know, why don't we just use, you know, like two huge lengths and then you don't have to attach any more on. The wire becomes work hardened very easy doing this to it. It's... It's a hard thing for the wire to take is all this twisting and bending and pulling it in and out. And if you have too long a length, what you will do is you will stop your curves from being smooth because the wire will have become so work hardened that you'll just end up with little jagged you know, points of wire. If you feel your wire is getting to that point and it's getting too hard to move, just find a piece of framework, wrap it off, wrap it round, trim the ends, smooth it down don't we're only working with copper don't ruin your whole piece because you've got uh, a work hardened piece of wire that's that's become very angular in a piece that's very flowing with soft lines so another curls when you're going around the stone like i'm going to do now going to the side of the stone and then I'm going to come back. So although I'm sort of over the top, I'm only over the top of the edges of the stone. When I wrap around the frame, you can see my right hand or my dominant hand is doing the wrapping, but my left hand is holding the curl in place so that when I pull through the framework, I don't distort any of the the curls or the um, waves, any of the soft movement that I've made with the wire, it doesn't it doesn't spoil that. Just remember to keep going around the frame. If you don't, what you will end up with is lots and lots of curls that are loose on the top of your piece and that could catch particularly if you're wearing uh, a jumper or something like that. You, you don't want to snag it, you know, on a pendant. And certainly if you're selling, you don't want to sell a piece of jewellery that a customer could snag, you know, um, you know, a posh blouse or a jumper. Or some, they don't want to, you know, you get a silk blouse and you've got it caught on a piece of wire. No, you don't want that. So come here. But I'm still holding with my left. Your left hand is so important because it is keeping these lovely sweeping curves and the curls that you're putting into place and it's keeping them still. If you don't do that and you pull with your right hand, you'll just, you'll either distort the framework, which is no good because then you don't have your base shape to work around. Or you will pull tight the wires and you'll just be end up with straight lumps and bumps of wire. Sometimes when you're making these, you get to a certain point and think, oh, this is so ugly. It's horrible. The curls aren't going right. They're not in the right direction. I don't like it. I'll scrap it and start again. Don't. 
just keep going. I don't know if any of you have ever done any flower arranging, but when you get half of the flowers in that arrangement, it looks terrible. It's not until you've got all the flowers in that it really, really takes shape and looks lovely. Doing the chaos curls is very much like that. Half finished pieces do not look brilliant. They're not meant to. It's not until you've finished it that you'll get you know, the full effect. I'm just finding somewhere for these ends to go. In you go. When you first start off, you're using the framework or the, the lines of the cross almost um, solely as your means of anchoring your other wire. This is where we use 0.8 to do the curls with and we use one mil to do the frame. So we're going on to something stronger. Once you've got a few layers of your curls in place, you can actually anchor two other bits of the chaos curls if that's easier. But for the first piece of wire at least, try and always go onto the framework. It's, an, it's another good way, sorry, excuse me, <laughs> hiccups. Um, it's another good way as well to make sure that you're staying within the boundaries of the frame. Do you remember when I said that if it wasn't exactly the right shape, it didn't really matter because the curls will hide that and they will, you know, sort of change the eye. Now I've got another two pieces of wire here and again, I'm finding a strong point for them to go to. So I've gone right over that corner there, which is circle and cross so it's got like a double layer now i speeded this up because really you've seen what i'm doing now you know how i'm doing the curls and the circles and and all the rest of it and i'm doing just the same thing sometimes i need to use pliers because my fingers aren't strong enough and at the moment i must admit i burnt one of my thumbs so it's not the easiest of things isn't doing this but let's just get that through the middle, you see, through the middle and not necessarily on the frame. If you want to have some detailing on the back as well, you can do that, but do that as sort of with your last piece. Get your top work done in first. I think you'll find that you won't need anything on the back. It actually looks, it looks quite nice. It's amazing. Um, often people turn them over and say I like the back better. But all I'm doing is I'm just building up these curls and the swirls and going round and round. This particular pendant, the large cross, looks very nice if you do it with a, a beaded chain to hang it on. Or if you hang it on a cord, it looks very nice. You know the sort of cords that you have on curtains and things like that, you know the heavy the cords, they look really, really nice with these. Do take that into consideration if you're selling the, sometimes the chain that you hang it on can be just as important as the piece itself. So how far have we got now? We're doing a little bit more curls and weaves. I've come back down and around the stone again. So I've slowed this down so that you can see what I do when you go around the stone. I'm actually going to go through the work itself there as opposed to the framework. Let's go in the middle of there. Yeah. And then I can finish that off. I have one piece of wire longer than the other. This often happens. And what I'll do is I will finish off them separately, I think. And I can take that one down the bottom. When you grip the end of the wire, don't grip where you want it to bend. Grip at the very tip of the wire and ease it through. It makes life easier. Now we'll take that tip, bring it out and smooth it down. Don't remember, to, don't forget to smooth all of these pieces down. You don't want any sharp bits or pieces. I mean, obviously you could tumble this once we're done and I will be tumbling it um, later on today. If you have a look on the forum, there's quite a few 
hints and tips on tumbling. There's a really good one that I'd never thought of. Somebody has used um, BB pellets, you know, the little from teenagers, weird little guns to shoot, little round plastic ball things. And they also use some tile spaces so that they've got plastic. And apparently it worked really well. That's, that's a brilliant idea. So I'm pushing all this now back into shape. And I could leave it at that point. However, I think it needs a bit more heaviness. It's quite a big cross and I, I've got some gaps here and then. I might want a bit more around my stone. It's pretty secure in there now, but let me just go in right at the side of it. So another two lengths of 0.8 and I'm going back around my stone again. If you find that you go around your stone and the wires are not sitting the way you would like them to sit. Let's say I've got my left hand holding my wires. I pull this through with my right. And when I take my fingers away, that wire is say covering the stone too much then what you can do is take a give it a push with your fingers I'm going to take a little piece of the 0 0.5 and I'm just going to go through and then I'm going to bring that wire out of the way so I can work with the finer wire so you can use the finer wire to stitch, if you like, your top wires into a position that you want them to be in. Especially when it's on a long sweeping curve. Sorry, I'm just trying to find a hole for it. I will, there, sorry. We'll pop that back through. So it's going through the, over the framework and through the curls itself and I'm going to pull that tight so it will hold that piece of wire there out of the way of the stone it's not going to slide over if you've done anything that you feel you know what I'm not sure whether that's completely stable take a smaller bit of wire and pop it through and just stitch it into place with a piece of finer wire Remember to wrap it around a few times when you've finished so that it stays in place. You can also use finer wire if you want in the same way to add small beads in and amongst the chaos curls themselves. So you could finish the whole piece and then decide, you know what, it needs a bit of sparkle, it needs a bit of bling. Take the finer wire, take some small beads and everywhere you've got a little, you know, whirl of wire that could do with something in its centre. You can pop it in there. So then, what we got? We'll do a few more twists and curls and waves and wiggles. I'm going through the centre of the piece there. Don't be afraid to come round the back or come up through in places where it's looking a little naked. Try not to get one area that's super duper built up and then naked areas. So I'm coming out, I'm going to cover that little hole there. You don't need to use simple single curls like I'm using. You could do spiral twists. You could take a piece of your wire and you could wrap it in the final the finer wire you know so it looks like a coil and then you could place that in and amongst your work you could add copper beads to your working wires like these that I'm working with and wrap those in so they stay in and amongst if you don't you want to use the finer wire and add them later just press those ends in There are so many things that you can do with the chaos weave because it is so chaotic that nobody can ever say 
well, that's wrong because it shouldn't be there. Because who can tell? So let's have a look at the other end. I have a bit of a hole there. Let's just do a curl over the top of that. Just going to move these out of the way a little bit. Sometimes if you need to grip with your pliers, rather than gripping with a square ended plier, which may mark your wires, if you grip with round ones, it's better. Now, I just went all the way around the back there. This is because I'm getting to the point where there's very little room for me to go in and out. So seeing as I'm virtually at the end, I want to take this across to this side. Cover any holes that I've got there. Let's go around the back. Another curl. This is quite intensive on your fingers. You may find that when you're making yours, that you don't do it all in one go. You might put on one layer and put it down and give your fingers a rest. Um, because it is quite hard work. It does leave them a little bit sore. Particularly when you burnt them. <laughs> right, so I just wrap around that an extra time. And I'm going to smooth that down. And the same with the other end. Just find somewhere for it to lip, pop it through there. Now then, I just have this one wire at the top. A bit long actually, is that? Let's just trim some of that off. When you're finishing off, don't struggle with long lengths. Trim them down, make life easier on yourself. So I can tuck that through there and bring it round. There we go. Smooth that in. I'm using the end of the pliers just to push the curls within the uh, shape of the cross. So there we are. I've got um, a Celtic style cross uh, with a a gemstone. Of course, I'm going to oxidise it because I always do with copper. I, I do love my oxidisation. So what I'll do is I'll take that off the kitchen now and put it in some oxidisation liquid, give it a polish, and then I'll uh, take a quick photo of it. But later on today, that'll be going through, through the tumbler. There we go. Shiny, polished, all finished. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. I really like one. Thank you very much for watching. Happy wrapping.